This is Jerry Mischewski with Balance Community Slackline Outfitters. Today we're going to be taking a look at our new drop test rig, which is behind me, going over what it is, how we set it up, and some tests that we plan on doing in the future. Let's check it out. All right, so let's start over here with our ground anchor. You can see here we got two bolts in the cement floor in the shop here, and it's connected to this small hang frame right there. And then we got our MPD attached here, and we have this rope, which is our haul line going up to a pair of AM steel ropes that are both tensioned at the very top of these um, steel poles that we have in the shop here. Uh, and up there you can see, zoom in, there's a pulley, omni block. It's connected straight to the tensioned AM steel lines. And then going down to our 80 kilogram <clears throat> kettlebell. And the whole line is attached to the kettlebell via, first we have this sewn pressic cord going to a shackle, which is rigged incorrectly, but that's on purpose to make the disconnection of the snap shackle here uh, super easy. And the way it works is when we haul the, the weight up, I'm gonna use this cord down from the bottom and simply pull it open like that. And it opens the snap shackle super easy, dropping the weight. And I can reinstall it super easy by just sticking it on there. And just like that. Super easy installation. And so then, this box here on the bottom is there just in case something breaks and so that the weight doesn't slam into the uh, cement floor. So then we have a slack line rigged up there. Anchor here and anchor there. And this slack line is uh, one of the variables that we can change in our setup. Uh, we can change the anchors, the line material, the hardware, anything and everything. And directly threaded onto the slack line, we have a dynamometer, specifically the Rock Exotica Enforcer. Uh, it's threaded straight on to act as the leash ring. And on the other end, we tie a leash. Uh, again, another variable there we can change is the leash. So we can do some leash tests um, if we'd like. And <clears throat> the other end of the leash will be tied directly to the handle on the kettlebell, straight on there. You can see that this leash has been tested a few times because it's uh, pretty black from the handle there. Uh, and moving on, we have next, we have this loosely hanging rope here that acts as a backup just in case that line fails so that the weight doesn't slam into the ground if the line were to break. All right, so moving on, the order of operations that we have here for our break test or drop test rig is uh, first we'll haul the test weight up all the way to the top of this um, haul line here. And that puts, puts the test weight roughly 24 inches uh, above the slack line. And when we start the test, we make this leash roughly 35 inches long, plus the seven inches of uh, dynamometer up there, gives a 42 inch rope length. And so that combined with the two foot above the line, uh, plus leash length fall distance gives us a 1.6 roughly fall factor on this particular setup. Um, so some of the 
the things that we can test with this is uh, currently we're testing different anchor materials to see if the impact force on the line and on the leash changes uh, with different materials and different elongations. Another thing we can test is the slippage in web locks, see how that's affected with high impact leash falls. Um, we can also test the, diff the impact force on different material lines. Uh, we can test the elongation of the materials after repeated leash, leash falls. Um, and several other things with this particular fall or drop test rig. Uh, it's a really cool addition to the shop. Uh, I'm really excited to continue to play with it. Uh, I'll have the first bit of research coming out uh, in the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that. I just want to quickly cover some of the downsides or drawbacks or limitations of our drop test rig here. First, uh, we're limited by the distance between the two poles. It's 14 feet from pole to pole, or 3.7 meters, and that's all we have here in the shop. And so uh, we're limited by the um, conclusions that we can draw from the data that we acquired from this drop test rig due to that short distance. But that being said, the short distance kind of maximizes the, um, the outcome that we're seeking in that real-life scenarios will likely be much lower impact forces compared to this rig due to this short length. Most high lines are far longer than this, which gives more material to absorb more forces. Um, so that's maybe not such a bad thing. But we're also limited by the height here. Uh, again, it's only 14 feet, 3.7 meters. And so the, the, the fall distance are kept to a minimum to prevent the, the weight from sliding into the ground. And so uh, we're not really um, directly comparing to real life scenarios there because leashes are typically longer in real life and people are falling much further. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a nice start, something it's better than we were using before and we can gather some really useful information with this rig and I'm really excited to share some of the results that we have already with you guys soon. Um, that pretty much covers everything we have about the drop test rig. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'll be happy to answer. Um, again, Jerry Mischewski, Balance Community. Thanks for watching.